Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Parallel Turbine United uh, model number A4062S1. MSRP for this watch is $4,380. Um, now the question is, is this watch a gimmick? Uh, at first glance it may look like a gimmick, but this watch appears to be well made and it does feature a 100% in-house uh, manufacturer movement. So Parallel has a number of in-house movements. This one is the P-331-MH uh, and as I mentioned it's 100% in-house. Uh, Parallel, the uh, gentleman named Parallel, uh, who this company is named after, he was the first one to develop an automatic self-winding movement and that was in 1776. So you'll see that year featured uh, below the name here, also on the box, so um, you're proud of that, 1777. So, yeah, you know, I enjoyed uh, wearing this watch. It's a little bit too big for my wrist. Um, yeah, the dial is, is distracting, but uh, it's also fun, so it's a fun watch there's no denying that it's it's uh nicely made it does have this bezel mid case and then the screwed on case back not a screw down case back uh, water resistance on this watch is 50 meter so it's not a dive watch and 50 meter is, is plenty good uh, this movement looks very nice though um, I'm impressed by the specs of this movement and I'll leave a, a link in the description to the Parallel website, uh, actually two links to the website and then a link to another article talking about the movement. So let's go over the specs of the watch and we'll talk about the movement some more in a moment here. So if you're not a fan of the Miyota 9015 because of the noise it makes, well this rotor makes a similar noise. There are 12 blades on this um, turbine here and it's black anodized aluminum and uh, this thing can really spin. So let me zoom out here a little bit. We'll give it a, uh, a shake here, see if we get it spinning. So I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it on the camera but by eye with that blade is spinning so fast you can see the entire dial that may not come across on camera here. So let me just give it a shake off camera here. Now, like I said, when it really spins, you can just see the entire dial. I think we can kind of see it there. So this is the United version and uh, it is named after the United States of America. It does have the red, white, and blue colorway. And you can see through the slits of the turbine there, we got the red, white, and then we have the blue with the stars, just like the American flag. And then the indices are also red, white, and blue. When the light hits just right, you can see the flash of blue there. This is a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the top and bottom of that crystal. So you can see the rotor there. The hands kind of look like they're just floating it looks like they're, uh, you know, drawn on the crystal, but they're not. So it's, it's actually quite easy to tell the time with this. Nice pop of red on that second hand there. And then the hour and minute hand, very easy to read. So it's, it's actually quite legible. Just, uh, you know, m most of the time I look at the watch, I get distracted by the spinning turbine, but um, I am able to tell the time once I focus on that. So as I mentioned, uh, this is a Swiss watch uh, manufactured is based in Switzerland. Many generations have worked with this, in this brand here. Uh, a lot of neat history. Like I said, I'll leave a link to the website. I don't want to go through it all here today. I typically don't uh, go through all that uh, with the watches here. So the movement is cost certified COSC, which is minus four to eight seconds per day. And it's also chronifiable, which I have never heard of that before. So chronifiable is a um, reliability guarantee and that's certified through uh, the Dubois organization. So I'll try to leave a link to that as well. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that 
chronifiable term so it's not only is it going to be accurate but it's also going to be a reliable watch uh, 8 beats per second hacking and hand winding uh, 42 hour power reserve Inca block anti-shock technology as well so let me zoom back out I have not experienced the loom yet on this watch myself but I understand that um, some of the stuff behind the dial here is loomed so not sure how I'm going to hit that with the UV light. I might have to spin it and shine a light on here. But anyway, back to the movement. It is just a push-pull crown. Again, 50 meters water resistance. It is engraved with the P there for parallel. A very large crown. So uh, no date. So first click out. Hacking. The second hand has stopped. Then you can adjust the time. Push that back in and it starts ticking away again. So I think it's a very cool watch. Uh, unfortunately, it's too big for my wrist. Uh, but before we get to the specs, we do have brushed and polished 316L stainless steel here. I like the, um, how would you call that, scalloping on the case there. It's a very cool looking watch. I'm very comfortable on wrist as well. Uh, it's a bit big for my six and a half inch wrist, but it's worn very comfortably. I can wear it on either the tightest or second tightest whole position actually you can probably still see the imprint on my wrist here from that case back uh, kind of an interesting pattern with uh, the display case back being right there and then you can see the ridges around here so I might have been wearing it a little bit too tight so you know I don't even know what these ridges are on there for because it's not like you can unscrew the case back it's just screwed in these four corners so probably a stylistic detail there and uh, these ridges do match up with the uh, slots on the side here so Looks neat. So the specs of this watch, uh, it's a big one, 54.6 lug to lug. Uh, the strap is basically integral in there though, but anyway, 54.6 lug to lug, 44.5 case diameter, 13.6 thick, and it weighs in at 129 grams on this rubber strap. And that is an 8.4 millimeter crown. Uh, just realizing I did not measure the lug width, but uh, you know it's, it's a specific strap, so you can't put another strap on there anyway. So it does taper down quite nicely here. All right, let me put this on my wrist. Actually, before I do that, let's compare it to my SKX here. And I'll give you a good sense of the size of this watch. Uh, quite big. Uh, but I can still wear it. I mean, it wore comfortably on my wrist. It does overhang my wrist, but um, I, I could still wear it, uh, technically. And then uh, these watches are the same thickness. Uh, but this is a 200 meter water resistant uh, rated watch. A diverse watch too. So it's actually been ISO certified to that depth. Yeah, every time you move this, that uh, that rotor just spins like crazy, or the, uh, sorry, the turbine. Uh, Parallel actually does have a watch that has a double rotor, so it has a rotor on the front and a rotor on the back. Uh, from what I can tell, this does not power the movement. This turbine does not power the movement, but of course the rotor does on the back here. Um, I mean, this thing just spins way too freely for it to power anything. Not sure if you can hear that. I'll be releasing a shorts video too, um, and you can hear it. Sorry, I'll be quiet this time. So, not sure if you can hear that or not, but I definitely can. It doesn't really bother me, it's just something you're not used to hearing on a uh, mechanical watch. Well, I mean, you can hear it on some Miotas, but uh, not like this. So, I have it on the tightest position here. Uh, again, I have a six and a half inch wrist. You know, I even talk about the bracelet, uh, the strap. So this is the rubber strap. You do have some nubs right here to keep that first keeper in place, and then the second keeper can move around. Nice buckle on this, and the uh, tang's a little bit different too. I'll take it off my wrist in a moment and show you that tang. So there we go on my six and a half inch wrist with the 52 millimeter wristband. Again, lug to lug on this, it's 54.6, so it's overhanging by 
um, 1.25 millimeters per side of my wrist, I guess. I think I did that math right. It is a, you know, it's thick, but it, it kind of nestles down into my wrist, as you can see from that imprint. And then we do have the P on here again for parallel on both sides. Uh, this strap is super, super comfortable. Uh, most rubber straps are very comfortable. All right, let's zoom out a little bit, give you a little bit different of a perspective here. Zoomed out a little bit farther than I was expecting there, but uh, there you go. Zoom back in. All right, so let me show you this tang and then uh, we'll compare the loom and we'll close out the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it and it really does help me out here. Uh, so not much of a relief on the back. Typically the rubber straps will have some uh, relief in here for airflow. This one really doesn't have that, just a little bit up here. So anyway, let's look at the tang, <laughs> the movement, or the turbine, sorry, you can just hear that thing spinning. So, very cool, uh, very unique. Uh, not seeing any other watches like this. It looks like you might be able to uh, replace that or remove the buckle here and then uh, put it on a replacement strap. So let's uh, let's take a look at the loom. All right, so the parallel is on the left here, obviously, and then the SKX is on the right. Let's see if we can make it a little bit darker in here. Guess not, but you can still see the loom on both of these. Um, so yeah, I'm holding them both in my hand. I do this strap, but you can see the loom just poking through there when the rotor spins. Um, you know, by eye, I would still say the SKX is brighter. Um, but the loom is pretty decent on the parallel. Let me set down the SKX and uh, we'll spin the parallel and see how that dial looks. Yeah, so there you go. See if I can find my UV light in the dark here. There it is. Let me spin it one more time. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Uh, you know, maybe it is a gimmick, maybe it's a, a toy for an eight year old, but uh, I really like this watch. I think it's very cool. Um, you know, if it was a little bit smaller and I had room in my collection, I would consider picking one up for myself. But, um, well, you know, a good thing about uh, having a channel here is I get to play around with some watches and, uh, and send them back. So, anyway, that will conclude this video. As always, thank you for your time and thank you for watching.